you're really just gonna abuse the like button what's up everybody anime x here and in this video i will be doing or i should say i will be adding a part six to the what if naruto was an uchi series now the reason for this is that you guys seem to be hitting that like button harder than naruto punched neji in this series um so i'm gonna have to take uh, i'm gonna have to take this like goal to a few tiers a little bit higher i mean you guys obviously hit 300 50 something like that so i was going to do that but now the light goal is going to be 400 likes and you guys are getting a part seven immediately after this visual video as usual i'll be recapping the last part and then jumping right into the video and so without further ado let's get started so like I just said, I'll be recapping the last part of this video. So in the last part of this series, we see Naruto and Sasuke go through their one month training for the final exams of the Chunin exams. And then we see Naruto absolutely body Neji in their fight. We also left off in particular with Sasuke stabbing Gaara the shoulder, Gaara freaking out, and then the Konoha crush attack happens. And Naruto and Sasuke are currently facing off with Gaara. So let's jump right into it. So, like I just said, Naruto and Sasuke are now facing off with Gara. So, that'll be pretty interesting. So, just like in the original, well, similar to the original, Naruto and Sasuke are facing off with Gara, except Naruto actually arrived at the same time as Sasuke did, meaning that Sasuke did not get bodied before they actually fought. So, the first thing that Naruto does in order to test Gara's strength is use one Chidori. Now, the reason he's so uh, nilly willy with the Chidoris, I guess, is just due to the fact that he's able to use four, and that's before relying on the actual QB chakra too heavily that's before he needs to act rage out so he wants to use one chidori to test gara's strength and speed to see what they're getting themselves into and he charges at gara full speed and gets bodied for a bit after using like he, he charges at him he hits gara but gara just elbows him in the back all the way down and that kind of hurts naruto for a little bit after this naruto and sasuke start tag teaming gara are able to kind of catch him off guard naruto and sasuke are both trying to taijutsu him up using a, a mixture of taijutsu and fireballs in order to kind of shake things up with gara sasuke decides to save his shidori for later in this fight and he decides not to try to use the curse marks just due to the fact that he's not as desperate in order to get a dub and he's not as desperate to even get a hit on gara now that naruto's there to kind of help him out and balance it out with the shadow clones with the shadow clone spam and fireball jutsu spam after this, um, they, they are able to land a couple of solid hits on him, but although it's not going to do much to Gar due to his healing and just his raw sheer power. After this, Gar transforms even more to like where he's kind of like that full tailed, not that full tailed thing, but where he's completely covered in sand, not partially. And he starts fighting pretty even with both of them working together flawlessly. Like basically, with Gar like this, they're only barely able to hold their ground, and that's with them, you know, helping each other perfectly, saving each other from getting bodied by Gar every once in a while, using Fireball Juju to keep them safe. Now, just when they start to make progress, right, in the fight, they're starting to actually couple, land a couple of hits, they're starting to slow Gara down, Sakura decides to come in and changes the entire situation. She just goes over there, and when she sees them fighting, she thinks that it's a good idea to call out to them, like, call out Naruto and Sasuke, even though there's no need for that, for her to summon them. There's, she, the summoning Jutsu isn't needed right now. But she calls out to them, and this not only throws them off, leaving Sasuke and Naruto open to a talk, attack from Gara, separating them, heavily injuring them both, but it also leaves them, uh, like, it leaves them an, another weak, like, weak, useless person. Like, now they have to protect Sakura on top of fighting and protecting themselves, which just lowers their ability to win even more. After that, Gara turns to Sakura, Sakura and with a single glare, Naruto and Sasuke know that Gar is going to attack Sakura, so they need to set up a plan to protect her. Why they want to protect her? Only I don't know, but it, they want to protect her. So Gar then extends his hand directly towards Sakura, ready to stab her and kill her right where she stands. Then right before she gets hit unfortunately two shadow clones jump in front of her and get stabbed by both of the hands these clones are but these clones are imbued with enough chakra to actually take this attack for a little bit get stabbed and then not only survive for a bit but grab gara's hands while holding him still they, they were also able to deflect the hands from hitting sakura so she remains unscathed for now then after this naruto and sasuke come in with gara being held in place by the two shadow clones and we both see them both charge up a chidori to grow with a double chidori and run directly at gara and then with their chidori combo they chop off both of gara's arms right then after this sasuke crouches in a low position he then kicks gara in the chin into the air and then decides to hit him with the lines barrage right this time uh you know enhanced a little bit with some curse mark i mean he sasuke's not using too much of it it, it receded after he used this attack but it did imbue it with some more power after this, above Sasuke is three of Naruto's clones, all of them with strings in their mouths, which are attached to Gara. Then, they all launch their fire attacks down the string, and with a fiery explosion, the two think they have won. But after this, they are also almost completely drained of Chakra. Sasuke from using the curse marks, and Naruto just from the onslaught of Shadow Clones and the amount of stuff he's been doing. Also, he's not a Nuzumaki, so he has a lot less Chakra than he does in the original. 
but all this did to Gar was upset them. So now uh, he decides, yeah, I'm going to give complete control over to Shikaku just to show you guys what for. Then, as the stars from Sasuke are falling, nearly chakraless, they see Shikaku appear with Gar at the very top of them. Now, they are both, they're barely able to summon enough chakra to even move or soften their landing, much less pull off a jutsu that could contend with that full tailed beast. So, Naruto and Sasuke both hit their heads on the ground pretty hard, landing with a solid thud. Now, when the two do land, they look up at Shukaku, and Naruto knows that they need to summon, that he needs to summon some of the Kyuubi's Chakra, so he tells Sasuke to keep Gar's attention for a bit, that way he can concentrate and get some of the Kyuubi's Chakra, since it does take a while for him to convince Gar Karama in order to give him some Chakra. So, after this, Sasuke forces the curse mark open once more, and then, for about a minute straight, Sasuke is bobbing and weaving all of the large-scale Jutsu that that Gar is attacking, and this is very difficult for him, because keep in mind, Shikaku may not be that fast, but his Jutsu could cover a wide range, so Sasuke is literally moving at maximum speed for a minute straight, trying to keep himself away from getting bodied by Gara. and after this, the curse mark repercussions hit, and Sasuke loses all stamina and mobility, but right before he is crushed by Gara, he, uh, right before Gaara crushes him, he is saved by 20 Shadow Clones, and, and they save Sasuke, then, Naruto takes some blood that's on his head, his arms, and, and basically Naruto's bleeding a lot, so he doesn't have to bite his thumb. He takes the blood, weaves the hand seals, and su uses the summoning jutsu to summon Gamabunsa. And then, the rest of the fight would happen per normal, but Naruto has a little bit more tricks up his sleeve in this. So, just unlike in the original, Naruto's on top of Gamabunsa, and this time he decides he wants to charge something up. So he gets on Gamabunsa's head, makes him transform into the into the Nine Tails so he looks like him. That way they can fight Shikaku a little bit easier. And then, Naruto decides, while Gamabunsa's holding him still, to charge up a Chidori, run jump off of Gamma Boonsa's head and land on top of Shukaku in order to free in order to separate Gara from Shukaku and punches him off right after after the Chidori vanishes from using it on Shukaku now after this he talk no jutsu's Gara, similar to how he does in the original and the fight kind of ends with everyone but he but Sakura um in that fight being unconscious and in the case of Naruto and Sasuke they are barely clinging to anything except the thought of hopefully surviving Sasuke in his head while he is passing out thinks that they are both approaching the level of Itachi Uchiha and actually with his summoning Sasuke thinks that Naruto should be able to take on Itachi alone <laughs> and oh boy does he not know how wrong he is but either way Naruto was able to beat Gara, or at least they went to a stalemate and Sasuke was able to somewhat help Sakura made the fight worse but hey I mean Sakura does what Sakura is gonna do but with that Sasuke passes out and he actually passes out with surprisingly a smile on his face because he thinks that hey they're getting stronger, he was protecting his friends unlike something that Itachi would do, so he's actually getting stronger as a ninja, and he thinks he's ready soon to face Itachi, but like I said, oh boy is he wrong. Now after their fight with Gara, Naruto kind of starts to wake up in a hospital. Now. Uh, he, he looks up, right, he, he wakes up just slightly, he's kind of barely conscious, and he sees Sakura staring at them both anxiously, mostly she's looking at Sasuke. Naruto then blinks a few times and finally opens his eyes fully to see that Sasuke is woken up as well, and he sees that Sasuke, for the first time in a while, has a genuine smile on his face, although he doesn't really know why. He also seems more upbeat than his usual self. In fact, he seems so upbeat that Naruto actually has to ask why Sasuke doesn't seem annoyed by Sakura, even though her annoyingness is on maximum. But then, Naruto wakes up, kind of fully he gets up brushes when naruto wakes up i should say sasuke brushes sakura off kind of ignoring her just like everybody should and ask if naruto is okay after they catch up for a little bit and they kind of get released from the hospital everything goes back to normal with naruto and sasuke training just like their usual selves trying to practice the chidori practice for taijutsu ninjutsu all that stuff but all of this comes to a halt when just like in the original kakashi ends up having a confrontation with itachi and um i'll briefly go over like so itachi uh, basically is going to body kakashi just like what he does in the original except kakashi is going to say he's going to say something a little bit different he's going to say that so like naruto and sasuke are both going to be ready to beat itachi in the future right this this is gonna this is gonna leave a, a little bit of a memory on itachi later which i'll explain later in, along in this part so just like in the original after kakashi gets bodied uh, jiraiya recruits naruto to go retrieve tsunade the most powerful of uh, medical ninja and um also you know, he gets to learn a new powerful jutsu if he goes with him. So, they travel along into the first town to get, first of all, to get rest just for a bit along their travels, and so Jirai can do his research. After this, um, Jirai takes all of Naruto's money, just like in the original, kind of swindling him, and then he decides to leave Naruto in the hotel, just like in the original. Now, while all of this is going on, 
Sasuke overhears about Itachi attacking Kakashi and also hears about how Itachi may be attacking the Kudiki Uchiha, Naruto. So, when he hears that, he dips immediately to where Naruto and Jirai went as soon as he can in order to not only kill Itachi but to save Naruto as well since he does not want to see another one of his friends and fr like friends who he considers family die. So, now, also like in the original, Naruto hears a knock at the door and opens it to see a pair of Sharingan that aren't his and aren't Sasuke's. Then, looking up all the way, he realizes that this is Itachi Uchiha, all grown up. And as soon as this registers in his mind, the hotel room blows up. Now, not in a, not in a metaphorical way, it literally blows up that part of the hotel. Like, it, Naruto tried to pull off a fireball jutsu, but Itachi was faster and, and launched one that caused the ensuing explosion in the hotel. Meaning that now Itachi, Naruto, and Kisame are out in the open, and this draws the attention of Jiraiya and, Ita and Sasuke, who are going there as soon as they can. But before they can get there, Naruto gets up and makes 200 Shadow Clones, and then asks Itachi why he did what he did. When Itachi doesn't answer, he doesn't give Itachi any more time to do anything else, and all of his clones start rushing at Itachi full speed, and none of them are even able to get close to him. Naruto, meanwhile, is observing Itachi's movements with the Sharingan, trying to find an opening to take Itachi down. But when a Shadow Clone finally lands a hit on Itachi, he bursts into crows, and then, right before he can be caught off guard, Naruto realizes that this is not a substitution, but this is a Genjutsu, and he releases it with the Sharingan, just in time to dodge a kunai strike from Itachi from behind. And then, Naruto asks, what are you gonna stab me the way you did back then? This actually makes Itachi hesitate for a second, and Naruto then tries to capitalize, but but it's it's not effective, and Itachi is able to counter with a nice kick to the chest. And it's just then when Sasuke finally locates Itachi and Naruto after seeing Itachi kick Naruto in the stomach. And Sasuke, not able to hold his anger back, charges up at Chidori and sprints at Itachi full speed, yelling out his name. Itachi then prepares to stop Sasuke and his tracks and stop the Chidori, but before he does, Naruto's clones jump on him and hold Itachi down just long enough for Sasuke's Chidori to hit. But just when Sasuke thought that he had won and killed Itachi finally, he sees a, he notices a buildup in Chakra with a Sharingan and realizes that the clone is about to explode, similar to how it would in the fight versus Kakashi, so just in the nick time, he's able to rip his arm out of that clone and escape the blast where he is able to barely survive unscathed. Sasuke and Naruto after this then stand back to back, and Sasuke has warned Naruto not to look into Itachi's eyes or else they'll be putting against you that they can't even break with the Sharingan. After that, Naruto tells Sasuke that he has to be more level-headed, and or they won't be able to hit Itachi. So, after they converse and they come up with a plan, they see Itachi, tar they see Itachi and they decide to start trying to put that plan into action. But when Itachi says that their hatred isn't strong enough, this makes Sasuke activate his curse mark surely by the rage that he is feeling right now in his body. And although Naruto is able to keep his cool to somewhat, because this doesn't mean nearly as much since Naruto was never told that his hatred needs to be strong in order to fight him. So, Naruto actually doesn't know what this means. But when, to mess with Naruto, Itachi asks how the stab wound is doing. This makes Naruto bring out Kurama's shocker unconsciously. But right before they attack, Naruto asks one simple question through his sieging rage. Itachi, who made you kill our clan? And when Naruto asks this question, for the first time... It actually makes Itachi hesitate for more than an instant, and that's when Naruto and Sasuke attack, pushing Itachi on the back foot, who is currently kind of stunned from Naruto's question. Stunned that Naruto even came to that conclusion that he was forced to do that. And just when Kisame is about to jump into the fight, you know, even though Itachi doesn't really need it, Jiraiya shows up and decides to start fighting Kisame and keep him away from Itachi, and keep him away from Itachi, Naruto, and Sasuke's fight. Now, while both of these, uh, while both of their speeds have increased in terms of Naruto and Sasuke, they've been increased dramatically. Itachi ha was only pushed back due to the him being caught off guard by what Naruto said. That kind of struck close to home for him, and that kind of made him off guard. But after Itachi recovers and is able to get his usual demeanor back on, he's able to start pressing them more and more, and actually starts beating them up pretty badly. Uh, in response to this, the curse marks on Sasuke spread more throughout his body, and Naruto's chakra becomes more and more monster-like, fusing more with Kurama to give him some more enhanced power. And then, with his influx of chakra, Naruto makes 1,000 shadow clones, and all of these clones make Chidori's, right? Now, this is a very extensive, a uh, chakra extensive technique, and this is going to actually take Naruto down for a little bit. But after this, he yells out, improvised Chidori, one million birds. And then, they all charge at Itachi. Itachi then decides to do something reckless that may drain him of a ton of stamina and chakra, but he knows it'll motivate the two to hate him even more, and since that's his goal, right before all the Chidori's hit, Itachi brings out the ribcage from the Susano and completely tanks all of these without a scratch on him. Itachi then tells both of them that if they hate him enough, soon enough they'll be able to eventually get the same power that he has. And he then blitzes both Naruto and Sasuke due to them being stunned by the Susano and his own words. And after that, Itachi stabs Naruto in the stomach with the kunai, reminiscent of what happened in the first part of the What If, if you guys remember that. 
He stabs him, and this actually makes Naruto flash back to what happened there. And not only does Naruto pass out from the wound and the chakra drain, but he actually passes out from the shock of having to deal with another traumatic experience just like that night. And then, he shoots a blast of Amaterasu between Kisame and Jiraiya, giving Itachi and Kisame a, a chance to escape. And with that, the two Ikatsuki members dip on out of there, Sasuke and Naruto passed out, and Jiraiya looking at them, worried about their condition. After this, Jiraiya then picks Naruto and Sasuke up, and brings them to another safe area, hoping to see them recover in a little bit. And that, everybody, is where I'm going to be ending Part 6 with the What If Naruto Was a Uchiha series. If you guys want a Part 7, 400 likes is the requirement. So, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button. And uh, if you haven't already done so, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss out on more Naruto Uchiha What If content. Uh, without other way, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, guys, this is Anime X. Signing off.